Every year, thousands of devout Hindus come to visit the sacred Kailash Parbat and Mansarovar Lake, situated in China's autonomous region of Tibet, from around the globe and neighboring India via Nepal. Tibet is the world's highest plateau which is surrounded by Himalayan range in the south, Karakoram range in the west, and Kunlun mountain in the north. Tibet is regarded as a unique land because of its climate, altitude, and landscape. It has many high mountains, and it is also the source of many rivers like Brahmaputra, Indus, Ganga, Mekong, Yangtze, Wangho, and so on. Kailash Mountain is a sacred pilgrimage for the Hindus. This is why thousands of Hindu pilgrims from India and other parts of the world visit Kailash Mountain and Mansarovar Lake every year. Most of the pilgrims travel to China's autonomous region, Tibet, via Nepal's route because it is the shortest and easiest. In our team, 25 people of Indian origin who live in California, New York, in the United States of America, while some are from India. All of us were intending to visit Mount Kailash and Mansarovar Yatra. We were humbly welcomed by Mr. Ganesh Nyopane, Managing Director of Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition Private Limited, when we reached Kathmandu. After welcome program, we were taken to Hotel Radisson Deluxe Five Star. Next day, all Kailash Yatri were taken to Pashupatinath Temple to offer their prayers. The devotees worship the gods and recite the religious books in the morning. Before starting the journey for Kailash, a meeting for discussion and planning is held. This is Gamo Bag. It helps the patients of high altitude to bring them back to the normal condition. This is an oxygen bottle and it is used when needed. If we have any difficulty with respiration, we have to take the help of people and take it. We have arranged enough oxygen for our trip. Now it's time to start the journey for Kailash from Hotel Radisson after breakfast. We are being prepared for it. All the pilgrims are climbing on the bus. After two hours of departure, they reach zero kilometers of Kavri Palanchuk district and rest for a while. Then, they move ahead through Dolalghat Bazaar and cross the bridge and move ahead 
along the Bhotekoshi River and reach Barambise Bazaar and then further to Tatopani Bazaar. On the way from Tatopani Bazaar to Miteri Bridge, there is a beautiful spring. The Yatri are spellbound by the spring and Bhotekoshi River. They are taking photos of such attractions. They also observe the Kasha Bazaar. Now we have arrived at Liping. Here is a bus park. Buses from Kathmandu do not move ahead from here. So, we walked ahead for 10 minutes and rested for some time in a hotel. It was already 10 a.m. So we took our lunch. After all immigration formalities finish, we walk ahead, reach Nepal Friendship Bridge, cross half the bridge. Tibetan security check our passport, visa papers one by one as the pilgrims are cleared for the journey ahead. Then after, we walked for five minutes and reached towards the jeep that was waiting for us. There are only four comfortable seats in one jeep. The journey on the jeep was very exciting because we could see the naturally beautiful scenes outside the jeep. Now we arrived at Jhangmu Bazaar. This bazaar is known as Khasa Bazaar in Nepali. We stopped here for some time to observe the beauty of the Tibetan settlement here. While moving ahead to reach Nyalam Bazaar from Zhangmu, we observed some springs, peaceful environment and green forests, waterfalls and Tibetan landscape. The distance from Nepal-Tibet Friendship Bridge to Nyalam is only 35 kilometers. Yatris reach Nyalam in a single day and they are required to spend two nights there and we also do the same. Since all pilgrims for Kailash are vegetarian, we arrange the same kind of food for them. Our cooking team is a specialized one for Kailash pilgrims. This we can see here too. Our cooks are preparing food. Our cooks are serving the food and pilgrims are having it with a great relish and they are enjoying it. This company always sends the expert workers to satisfy the Yatri. In the morning of the second day in Nyalam, after breakfast, Yatri observe the beautiful sights to be prevented from the problem of high altitude sickness when they climb up from the Nyalam Bazaar. This journey takes about two hours. Our group comes up from the hotel, takes a walk around Nyalam Bazaar for a while in a line. On completion of the journey in the hill, members of the tour are identified whether they are affected by high altitude sickness or not. This group of 25 pilgrims for Kailash tour seems large. They are now climbing up in the mountain. Some are dancing and some are moving around on the way. When they reach at the top of the hill, all of them do yoga. The moving colorful flags, Lumdar, posted for peace, gives heavenly pleasure. Nyalam, where we stayed last night, has an elevation of 3,750 meters. Yatri can feel uncomfortable when they arrive here in a single day 
but when they spend one night here, they start to feel easy. Only the people with Tibetan roots live here. On the way from Nyalam to Dongba, we arrived at Yalung La Paz, 5050 meters, from where white mountains can be seen and below that there are desert-like naked but very attractive hills. Here is a big gate that welcomes all. It is decorated with colorful flags. From here, mountains like Gauri Shankar and Shishapangma are clearly seen. Watching Yalung La Paz for a while, we moved ahead and before reaching the day's destination, we find Pekuchu Lake. Before arriving at this lake, we stop the vehicle and have lunch. After the observation of Pekuchu Lake, we drive for half an hour on the gravel road and find Nunilotal, Salty Lake. Then we arrive at Saga Bazaar. Before that, we saw the pure river Brahmaputra that starts melting the snow in Kailash Parvat and around the mountain. Today's journey for seven hours from Nyalam to Dongba has ended. Staying at Dongba, we start our journey for Mansarovar Lake. On the way, we see the heap of sand, grazing sheep, goats and yaks. Yatri are busy to take photos. The distance from Dongba to Mansarovar is only 335 kilometers away. Yatri can easily reach there in seven to eight hours of jeep or deluxe bus journey. Here we stop our vehicles and we are having our lunch. After lunch, driving continues. We reach at Horchu near the holy lake Mansarovar, observing beautiful scenes and naked hills. From here, Mansarovar Lake, Mount Gurla Mandata and Kailash Parvat can be seen very clearly. This is the place called Horchu and from here the circumambulation of Mansarovar Lake begins. This Mansarovar Lake circumambulation is 102 kilometers. According to the local people, it takes three days to circumambulate for local residents, but it takes five to seven days for the tourists or pilgrims by walking. Generally, to circumambulate the Mansarovar Lake, Yatri stay at Chiu Monastery the day they reach from Dongba. The remaining part of Mansarovar is circumambulated only after Kailash Parvat. We are in line to take group photo on the background scene of the lake. We arrived here after a 30 minute drive by the local bus or jeep from Horchu. While moving ahead after the observation of beautiful scenarios, we see the colorful flags posted for peace. We reach Chiu Gompa after approximately two hours driving. The lodges and mud-built guest houses are available here. In Hindu religious books, Mansarova Lake is described in this way.
Today we reached Mansarovar Lake, 4,580 meters, Brahma's Lake, Mapam Yumtso Lake. The lake is the most sacred among Hindus. It is also a must visit for Hindus due to its sacredness. Hindu scriptures reveal that a Hindu must visit this place once in a lifetime. We stayed at the place too. Manas means mind or consciousness. So Mansarovar Lake is known as the lake of consciousness and knowledge. This lake is located at an elevation of 4580 meters from sea level. This lake is connected to a deep religious and spiritual relation and importance between Hindu and Buddhist followers. It is religious belief that if one moves around the lake and bathes with its pure water, she will be pure by washing all the sins and diseases from the body. Likewise, it is believed that people can regain their youth and energy just by taking a bath by its pure water. As described in Ramayana, it is said that a person who moves around the Mansar of a lake and bathes with its pure water reaches the heaven directly. Similarly, it is written that the person who drinks the water of this lake recognizes the Shiva Lok, the palace of Lord Shiva. Kailash Parvat is situated about 58 kilometers to the north from Mansarovar Lake. According to Hindu traditional belief, it's said that Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati take a bath each day between 2 and 4 a.m. The following day in the morning, Pilgrims are going to Mansarovar Lake riding on the jeep from the hotel. Presently, they are all praying before bathing. Some are taking a dip in the lake, some are simply bathing and some others are offering money there. While praying, people are looking at Kailash Parvat and Mansarovar Lake at once. Pilgrims are seen taking holy bath here and some have finished bathing. Also, the pilgrims, according to Hindu religion, are seen offering water, flowers, money, to the God and splashing water among each other with much joy and enthusiasm. All the pilgrims are seen meditating to Lord Shiva and reciting the names of their ancestral gods, performing homes or offering grains mixed with butter to the fire in the name of gods in order to relieve themselves from any kind of sins which they might have committed knowingly or unknowingly. Nagindraharaya Trilochanaya Bhasmangaraya Maheswaraya After completing homes, they are exchanging happiness by hugging each other, much to the amusement of the onlookers. Everybody is doing arati, oil-fed lamps and praying by joining hands. We are preparing for worship now. Yes, 
शिव शंकर शंभु जय शिव शंकर शंभु जय जय करुणा सागर जय जय करुणा सागर कैलास पशुपति जय जय करुणा सागर जय जय करुणा सागर कैलास पशुपतिना हर हर Rakshas Tal or Monster Lake This lake is named on the basis of Hindu traditional story Hindu people believe that carnivorous monsters are hiding inside the dark waters On the basis of this belief people called it Rakshas Tal and stay away from this lake believing that it is the symbol of dark and destructive power According to the traditional religious stories the water of this lake is poisonous and fatal so to replace the poisonous water of this lake a tunnel was made from Mansarovar lake the pure water of this lake and a golden fish was released into this lake later this fish was found alive from it people's negative attitude towards the lake has changed and they started to go nearer to it but they still don't drink the water according to hindu mythology in treta yug the monster ravana has made lord shiva happy meditating in this lake rakshas lake lies in the west from mansarovar lake it is situated at a height of 4540 meters from sea level in mansarovar lake there are many birds including ducks but in rakshas lake there are no birds at all to the south we can see mount gurla mandata that seems very beautiful from here darchen is 45 kilometers far from the mansarovar lake and it takes 1 hour by jeep now we are going towards darchen darchen is known as the golden city located at the base of kailash parvat when we reach darchen we directly enter the guest house or hotel today we are preparing for kailash circumambulation or kora nepali workers are arranging goods on a truck all the pilgrims are ready on the jeep and headed towards yamadwar observing darchen city it takes 20 minutes for our jeep to reach there It is only at a distance of 5 kilometers. The place is also known as Tharboche. Getting off the jeep at Yamadwar, all the pilgrims are offering to Lord Shiva. Swami ji is preaching about the glory of Lord. Then we move around the Yamadwar 3 times. According to Hindu religion, This place is known as Yamadwar, gate of the god of death, and sneaking in and coming out or encircling it is practiced. From here, physically disabled pilgrims offer worship to Kailash Parvat from a distance and return home because the visit of Yamadwar is believed to derive equally religious gain as Kailash Parvat itself. Kailash Parvat is supposed to be the central part of the world and origin of the world before the origin of Hindu, Jain and Buddhism. Kailash Parvat is glorified in the holy books like Ramayana and Mahabharat. According to ancient Asian stories, the civilization is incomplete without the description of kailash parvat kailash parvat is located in tibet 
scientific research of this region is not satisfactory. This religious Parvat is extended from Brahmaputra in the east to Karakoram in the west. Different religious groups like Shaiva, Hindu, Bauddha, Jain and Bonpo are respecting Kailash equally, though they explain it differently. In the Shaiva and Bauddha traditional literature, Kailash is described as the part of Sumeru, which is supposed to be the center of the world. Kailash is believed to be the residence of Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati. Buddhist respect in the name of Kang Rinpoche. Buddhists have accepted the Kailash and Mansarovar as a great natural mandala. Mandala for them is the means of respect and salvation. Jains believe as Aspara for this isolated peak. The founding father of this religion, Rishavadeva, had got spiritual salvation in the same place. There are various logics to claim this Parvat as sacred. This Parvat is located in isolation. It can be moved around and this Parvat is the source of big rivers of Asia from all four directions. The main rivers originated in this area are Yarlung Janbo, Brahmaputra, Satlej, Indus and Karnali. The route for moving round the Kailash is 53 kilometers long. As described in Hindu myth, a person who moves around the Kailash Parbat will be free from all the sins made in lifetime. If they move around the Parvat for 108 times, they directly get Nirvana. We start our journey for three days from Sirsum. The required provisions and food were carried by yaks, porters and horses. After three hours long walk along the riverside road, we stopped for our lunch. Kailash Parvat is clearly seen from here. Below the Parvat, we can see a big stone in the shape of an elephant. It is believed that God Indra rides on it. After two hours long walk, we can reach at Derapuk. Derapuk Gumba is extremely attractive, which is situated much close to Lachu River. You reach Derapuk Gumba from Yamadwar, walking through the bank of Lachu River. This monastery is located at a height of 4,900 meters from the sea level. The scene of Kailash from here is like the heaven. Hundreds of pilgrims arrive at Derapuk from Sirsung riding a horse or on foot. Today we have to go to Dolmala or Dormala Pass and the weather is favorable. After one and a half hour walk from Derapuk, we arrived at Shivasthal. In this place, people can offer old clothes. The normal route for Kailash circumambulation is through Ganesh Kunda, Dormala and Gauri Kunda. After one hour long walk from there, we reach Sapche Datuk. This scene is of Dolmala Pass. This is on the height of 5,636 meters from the sea level. This is the tallest and most exciting on our journey. People can worship here. Our pilgrims are busy to take photos here. In this path, people may suffer from headache and vomiting, but it becomes normal when they climb down immediately. Sometimes this area is dangerous when there is storm and snowfall. We start the journey early in the morning. After descending for 10 minutes, we can see Gaurikunda. According to one legend, Lord Shiva is believed to have taken bath 
together with his consort Parvati. This lake is believed as the place of God Shiva and Goddess Parvati's bathing pond. The place you are watching is Juthulpuk Monastery. People generally spend one night in this place before leaving for Darchin and Chiu Kumpa or near Mansarovar Lake. These are the guest houses in this place. We arrived at Chongdu the next morning after a three hour walk. We can reach Darchin after half an hour jeep or bus ride. In this way, the three day Kailash round is completed. Having lunch at Darchin, we move towards Mansarovar Lake. Next day, Yatri are returning to Kathmandu. Rest of Mansarovar Lake Parikrama start from here to Horchu and it is completed. Going back, Horchu, Dongba, Saga and Nyalam. While returning, it was the mid rainy season in Nepal. We arrive in Kathmandu from Nyalam in a single day. We ask to Swamiji, Panditji, team leader and other pilgrims about our services. Ganeshji team, Raju and Vala, cameraman Yuvarazu, will underguda, e Kailas Yatralo, Kantimi the Rapaki, Ipudena, Dormut Nimogani, Kailas Yatralo Veltapot Vilnavalaki, Ye Rakamayan Asokari and Zaragadu, Achet Budanga Sustaru, Chala Pramananga Chesaru, Matripumatum, Vala Chetlo, Achet Budanga, Mingma, Vala Petkuni, Chala Baga Chesaru, Vildu, E. Timto Kalisiman Panchaidum, E. Timto Epidena Zeriman Kailas, Yatrik Velatamana, Anni Rakal in a twenty Sokari Alupundum, Megata, E. Timul Kentakota, E. Tim Chala, Budanga Panja. I feel very good. Ganeshji, no more suggestions. Ganeshji, Rajuji, and his entire team went beyond our expectations, not meeting. I mean, this team is awesome. They are fantastic. Without their help, it wouldn't have been possible. Truly, I thank Ganeshji, Rajuji, and all the other Sherpas, and everybody who made this a once in a lifetime yatra, a memorable, memorable one for all of us. I mean, it's just unbelievable, unforgettable experience. Thank you so much. Today, all of them are returning to their homes. So, we offer them some flowers and garlands in farewell. We were separated from each other, from the airport, promising to meet again in the future. The journey of Kailash and Mansarovar Lake is very important not only from the religious perspective, but it is equally important for the development of tourism. The management of this journey is made by Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition Private Limited, situated in Kathmandu, Nepal, and we are waiting for you to join us for such unforgettable trips in future, like mountain flight, trekking, holy tour in Nepal, jungle safari, whitewater river rafting, and mountaineering. Atithi Devo Bhava, guest is God. Om Namo Shivaya. Sula Tim Tabas Magaseka, Ezanahitakari. <laughs>